What's up everyone? I wanted to try to do a video here that I've been wanting to do for a long time. This is going to be my seven albums that were most important for me personally getting me into metal music, uh, particularly the more extreme like death and, and black metal side of, of metal music. Because I know a lot of people struggle with getting into that genre. So I figured doing a video like this might be helpful to anyone who has tried but hasn't been able to get into metal music in the past. Or maybe if you haven't ever really tried but you're curious enough to want to try but don't quite know where to start. Um, and I also think this could be interesting for anyone who already has been into metal and has been subscribed to my channel and watching my videos and just kind of wants to get an idea or is, is in any way interested in having an idea of kind of how I got into metal and the context of what, m how my interests kind of grew and why I'm into the things that I am today that I am into. So yeah, I wanted to do that. And I think that my experience getting into metal is different enough to make this video worthwhile to an extent because I didn't get into metal in a terribly typical kind of way. Um, I, I got into metal kind of the way that uh, the metal theologian explains that he got into jazz music where he just one day had list, had heard jazz in the past but it just never really worked for him never really clicked and then one day he was just, just heard an album that worked and from then on he, he went from there and found more albums that worked and that's kind of how I got into metal I didn't start at a foundation of a historical point of like Bathory, Dark Throne, Death or even something like Iron Maiden I just listened to some albums that worked for me and so I wanted to share those and maybe they'll help someone else I don't know uh, maybe at least some of these will some of these this first one I'm gonna show actually I don't know if it'll necessarily be a great gateway for other people but it was absolutely one of the most important albums in my life um, so I'm just gonna oh first of all though what we're listening to here in the background this is Panopticon uh, this is Autumn Eternal out on Bind Rune, Rune Records. Fantastic album. So that's what we're listening to right now. New album coming out this year, I think in March. Check it out. Amazing. Um, yeah, if you're watching this, another really great band um, to try and get into metal, I think, is Panopticon. Um, so back to what I was saying, though. This, this album by this band, hugely important for me getting into just kind of modern music in general at the time that I listened to this album because when I heard this album I'm gonna go ahead and show it because I, I hate when people feel like they're just like teasing something and won't show it I'm talking about KMFDM's Nile when I listened to this album uh, before before getting into this all I listened to at this point in my life I was about 14 15 years old and all I was listening to until this was 60s and 70s classic rock stuff like uh, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Emerson, Lake and Palmer, The Who, King Crimson, stuff like that. Uh, loved that stuff, and I thought modern music was uh, was shit. Had no interest in it, and this album changed that. And a big part of that was honestly because of some peer pressure. I mentioned before that I grew up in a religious family, and I was in a youth group at this point in my life. Well, you know, 14, 15 years old, and one of the kids in the youth group got his hands upon a hold of this album and brought it to the youth group and we all listened to it and actually became obsessed with it. We became obsessed with Came of Diem and just industrial music in general. I got into this and decided I was wrong about just being only interested in music from the 60s and 70s. <laughs> Whatever, that, that was that. Moving on to this album here. Um, this is an industrial metal album. Maybe some people might argue about the metal uh, aspect of it, but I don't care. Uh, to me, this is industrial metal. The vocals on this are akin to black metal vocals, a lot of them anyway. There's two two main vocalists, and one of them very much has the raspy kind of, uh, you know, proto-black metal kind of vocals, I guess you could maybe say. I'm going to say that. I don't care. Um, and, uh, yeah, that that's what, what it is. And it has definitely metal guitar riffs in this um i think their album angst is even more so with the metal guitar riffs but this one was 
was my favorite. And uh, they have a lot, a lot of albums. And if you're interested in checking them out, I would highly recommend this one, Camethean's Nile, Angst, um, Adios. And for a more recent album of theirs, I would definitely recommend, they have an album called WTF and then like an exclamation mark and a question mark. As far as their more recent things, I think that's the best one. And regardless of whether they're old or recent, those are my four favorite KMFDM albums. But really, really good stuff. Um, they have kind of an electronic dance vibe even to them mixed in with that, that whole thing. And when I was listening to this, when I would show it to friends, uh, you know, they would tell me, oh, that sounds satanic. Which, again, was a large kind of carryover into the modern black metal and everything that I listen to now. Um, yeah, and I think this also kind of sparked my interest in, in digging and getting into underground music as well, on top of all that. But, so after, after listening to this, uh, you know, and I always wanted to get this partly on, on vinyl, partly because it's out on a label called Wax, Wax Tracks of Records, which I always was like, even back then I really wanted to get on vinyl because I figured, you know, vinyl's called wax and that's why they called it that. So really glad to have this on, on vinyl now. Um, after that, I didn't really get into extreme metal. I got more into underground music, but not really in the direction of extreme metal. The closest thing to metal that I was listening to for years was stuff like Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, uh, or even like new metal type stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then when fast forward a bit though, and the year 2006, 21 years old at this point, so six years after listening to Came at the M and Nile, six years later, I was at Walmart, um, just a regular shopping trip, and I was over in the electronics department, kind of browsing the CDs. Walmart of all point of all places was kind of what sparked again my trip through black metal and death metal and doom metal, all that. So looking at their albums and an album art for an album on one of the shelves just caught my eye. So I went over and I picked it up and that album was Mastodon's Blood Mountain. I thought this album art was really cool. And when I went over and picked it up, it had a hype sticker on it saying that it was recommended for fans of the band The Mars Volta and that it featured guest vocalists from the vocalist of the Mars Volta, Cedric Bixler Zavala. And at this point in my life, you know, I hadn't been listening to extreme metal, but I was completely obsessed with the Mars Volta. I had driven across states to see them and then back to the, the state that I lived in and still do now, Florida, to see them again the very next day. Like I was completely obsessed with those guys. So. The album art caught my eye, and then seeing that, I had to buy this album. And as luck would have it, this was a metal album, kind of a sludge metal album. And it had um, a lot of the rougher, growlier, those kind of vocals. And at that point in my life, I hated that kind of thing because a lot of the friends that I hung out with were really into hardcore music. And I hated hardcore music partly because of the vocals. And I was not at all interested in any kind of music that had vocals that I would have lumped and that felt kind of that way to me, which at that point in my life, black metal and death metal vocals definitely fit that bill and had no interest in it. Just huge turnoff for me. But I bought this album and it had that kind of stuff on it. Uh, but it also had clean vocals, and it had enough clean vocals to where I could really enjoy some of the songs. And the guitar work and the drumming was so good on on the across this album that I, I wanted to like this album. I wanted to keep coming back to it. And I, I, I wanted to get over my kind of aversion to those growly, more extreme metal vocals. Um, and it took a while, and some of the songs on here were initial hits for me, like the song Colony of Birchman, which featured vocals by Josh Hom of Queens of the Stone Age, which I was really into at that time. Um, Colony of Birchman and The Sleeping Giant were two, two initial hits off of this, um, but one, that, one of the songs that really challenged me and kept me coming back to it, because I loved how 
cool, how awesome the drum sounded on it was The Wolf Is Loose, the first song on this album. Um, but it had vocals that were really challenging to me, much very aggressive metal vocals. But I kept coming back to it because I just thought the song was so cool. Saw them live, became a huge fan of them, and uh, and that's what happened. And, and um, yeah. So, from that, a couple of years go by after, after seeing, you know, getting into this band, seeing them live a couple times, I had a shirt, and at, at that point, um, I was living with a friend, and we had, we were living on a couple of acres of land, and we would always have people come over uh, and hang out, we had parties there all the time, or we would have bonfires, and we would just all hang out and drink, and whatever, and as luck would have it, a kid came over who saw me with my Mastodon shirt and he was a huge metalhead and I didn't know anyone else in my entire life who was into metal music up until that point and I had just gotten into this band just gotten into these guys and he would come over to to my house and you know and hang out with with us and with all of our friends and everything and we just started bonding over over metal music we started talking about it because like i said he saw the shirt and we just drink beer hang out at the bonfire and he started talking about metal music and he was already obsessed with it and he would start telling me about other bands i should check out and everything and yeah if honestly if i had not met that guy um his name is jj polichek which i'm going to be talking about him in future videos because He's actually the vocalist of a few metal bands now, um, but yeah, he came over. If, if I hadn't met him, my musical taste would have gone in completely different directions, I'm sure. I don't even know if today I'd be listening to uh, black metal and death metal and stuff. I don't know, maybe eventually one day, but it just kind of worked out that way. I got into this at the perfect time, met him right after at the perfect time. He would tell me about other bands to check out. And honestly, most of them didn't work for me. Most of them were duds. They were just too too far, too extreme for me at that point. But one that he recommended that really clicked and resonated deeply with me was Mas was uh, Agaloc. And one of the first albums was The Mantle. And this is this album has had its praises sung time and again. This is definitely one a, a favorite in metal music absolutely and deservedly so it, it honestly wasn't just this one i was listening to this ashes against the grain and the white ep all kind of together but if i were gonna lump up like the one that was probably the most significant i guess it would be this one but all of them are great man and um this this album blew me away when i listened to it man when i listened to it uh, it just, it, it made me feel, musically, made me feel like I was in a snowy forest with just an overclass, overcast gray sky. I could, I could hear that in the music. And I had never experienced that before in my life. Never. And this, this was an album that it had the clean vocals. And it had the uh, black, the raspy black metal vocals as well. Um, but this was the first time where I finally understood the appeal of those raspy black metal vocals, because those vocals didn't make me think of of being of lyrics and words being sung by a human. But they kind of evoked a feeling of some kind of a spirit or a spirit spiritual essence that 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 it was coming from. And combining that with that feeling of being isolated in, in a snowy forest was just extremely potent. Just a, a, honestly a life-changing experience as far as the kind of music of what I expected could happen from music for me personally. This album completely changed what I expected from music. Like, I'm not at all being hyperbolic. It, it really truly did and completely changed my whole perspective on how stupid I thought those unintelligible black metal death metal type vocals were I I suddenly got it when I listened to this album this this uh, aside from the Mastodon album this is probably the single most important album as far as getting me into metal music 
Uh, if you haven't listened to this yet, please do it. This is an absolute masterpiece. All of Agalog's albums, and I know I'm a huge fanboy for them, but I think when I'm telling this story, you'll somewhat understand why. All their albums are incredible. Um, this is the uh, the reissue that they put out on. I don't even know if I should go into this detail, but this is a, a re or a remaster, and it's out on it's on uh, silver vinyl here, which is really cool. I have another version of it. It's on growl. It's on clear vinyl that isn't remastered. Also great. Um, I know uh, I've listened to Don uh, Anderson talk, and he said that um, that Agaloc would base a lot of their albums on uh, movies, and he said that. Um, the Mantle, this album in particular here, was based around a, a Jim Jarmusch's uh, Dead Man, the movie, which I have not seen, which is a, a honest shame, considering how much I love this album. Um, and The Mare of the Spirit was based on uh, Bella Tarr, The Workmeister Harmonies, uh, The White Album, which or White EP, which I mentioned earlier, is obviously based around The Wicker Man. It's got audio clips from The Wicker Man in it. Song titles are references to that movie great great stuff um if you haven't listened to this if you want to listen if you want to get into metal this is a really good one i think to try get yourself in a quiet room put this on and just let yourself become immersed in it really powerful great album uh next up i'm gonna talk this is another one that i think is not terribly uncommon uh for an early album to get into metal. I'm talking about Opeth in one, for one, Opeth in general, I think is a, a good early initial band to get into metal. And this is Blackwater Park. This was the album for me, man. Um, I really honestly don't listen to Opeth much these days, um, but but when I listened to this back, back then, back in, I don't know, when, whenever, uh, 22 years old or so, um, this, this, this album really blew me away. I think if you are not into metal music, but again, like me, had to spend a lot of time listening to classic rock, progressive type stuff like, um, Emerson, Lincoln Palmer, um, the, th the th I think I mentioned all these guys before, but Pink Floyd, King Crimson, Emerson, Lincoln Palmer, Led Zeppelin, you'll at least appreciate the musicianship, musicianship on this album. Um, and it has a lot, a lot in common with, with a lot of those artists. Very bluesy, a lot of the riffing is very bluesy, and it has, it's a progressive death metal album, and it has a lot of clean vocals, and has death metal vocals, but the death metal vocals aren't that terribly harsh i don't think so i think that it is definitely a good one for someone who's new kind of getting into this style of music to give a shot highly recommended opeth blackwater park um songs like um uh, leper affinity and the title track blackwater park were two very early favorites of mine um yeah, I think if you also, not not just with the classic rock, but if you're into, like, again, which I was into, stuff like Tool and Nine Inch Nails or New Metal, I do not do not think this is a huge leap, honestly, from that. Uh, if you're into that kind of stuff and have never been able to really get into metal, give this a shot. Um, I definitely highly recommend this album, especially Blackwater Park. Check it out. Uh, next up... Cynic, Traced in Air, came out in 2008. Love this album. This this is another one that just blew me away. I got it on blue vinyl. Another one that just blew me away when I listened to it, man. Um, these guys... This was actually their second album after a long hiatus. A lot of people really listen to the uh, their album Focus. But for me, I tried listening to that one back then, but... The 1993 death metal production on it was a was a huge obstacle for me back then, and and this didn't have that, um, and it just just blew me away on first listen. Um, the vocals again on this, they provide more than just the, the typical kind of death metal vocals that that were that are kind of more difficult for people to get into. There's higher clean vocals that that I really enjoyed. A lot of people I knew who I would try to show this to didn't 
didn't dig those, but they definitely worked for me early on. Um, and I, I forget if I just mentioned this, but the, two of the guys from this were also in Death uh, on their Human album. So if you like this and you want to know a point to go from this, check out Death, check out their Human album because there's similarities. The jazzy beats and the rhythms and the beautiful guitar work on here just blew me away. Combined with the cosmic lyrical themes about space and physics and themes around just all of life coming from and returning to a, a cosmic singularity um, kind of stuff. I, I was already really into science and Carl sagan -y type stuff, and so this, this just really, really resonated with me. Uh, the song Integral Birth was a very early standout to me. I, I really still to this day think this is a perfect album. And I, I really think it goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Focus, which I do love now, but incredible, incredible album. And I did also want to mention, if you are going to try to listen to Focus, make sure you're listening to the 1993 version of Focus and not the 2004 remaster because that sounds awful. Listen to the original 1993 mastered version of Focus. Uh, yeah, after this, these guys uh, like Opeth kind of, but in a very different way, went a lot more proggy, and it was a bit hit or miss after that for me, but yeah, man, this album just still carries a tremendous amount of emotion and a spiritual connection uh, for me, and I'm, I'm not even a religious person, but amazing album. Next up, I'm going to talk about Board Up the House by Genghis Tron. This came out in 2008. This is a cyber grind record, actually, um, which isn't technically metal, but doesn't really matter because this was absolutely one of the albums that, um, that was most significant in getting me into metal. This album blew me away and was the most extreme, abrasive music I had listened to up till this point in my life and actually enjoyed. My influence and love for Kama Theme was definitely showing its face again on this album because this is heavily electronic, harsh, metal, metal-y music. Uh, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to call it metal. <laughs> um, yeah. Amazing, amazing album. Like I said, very, very harsh and abrasive. And the most extreme thing uh, I think that I had listened to up until this point. Um, yeah, but... The, the parts that were just, that were so challenging to me uh, and, and abrasive because there were parts that really, really strained my ear. Uh, but, but I didn't, I, I, I put up with those parts and I listened to them because of how much on here was, was just so jaw-droppingly awesome. I was obsessed with this album for quite a while. And um, like the, the lyrics also in, uh, on this album are, are really great. The lyrics to the title track, Board Up the House, uh, sounds like a horror story of boarding up, boarding yourself up in a house because of some terror that's outside and literally being trapped and, and rotting to death inside the house because you can't get out. <laughs> just, just awesome, extreme awesome stuff. Um, I think this is an unsung classic, man. I really do. Incredible album. I, 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 I haven't seen a single video on YouTube talking about this, but damn, I love this album. Uh, I need to get some more of their stuff also. Genghis Tron, man. I hope they come back. They've been on such a long hiatus. I really hope they come back. We'll see. Um, but uh, yeah, this album really got me excited. Uh, this and Agaloc, I think, at this point, were the two that had me the most excited to keep digging into like the kinds of stuff that I would turn up looking into metal music. Phenomenal album. Um, so, next up, talking about Swallow the Sun with The Morning Never Came. Oh my god. Um, so, this is one of the crown jewels for me personally of my collection. Um, this is the album that got me into one of my favorite subgenres of extreme metal, and that being doom metal, especially like Death Doom and Funeral Doom, which this is Death Doom. Um, I got into these guys because 
actually by back in the day uh, listening to Opeth, which I mentioned earlier, which I showed a little bit ago, uh, in iTunes. Back then they would show, when you were listening to a band in iTunes, they would show like suggested artists over on the side. And these guys showed up while I was listening to Opeth one day. So I was like, alright. So I clicked on it and uh, fucking loved it right off the bat. And it was this album. And just, just loved it. Just loved it right off the bat. Um, I remember telling my friend how much I, I enjoyed the, the slow kind of plodding pace of the drums and how it felt like it was just kind of driving you hopelessly onward to some depressing kind of inevitable fate. And he told me, yeah, dude, that's doom metal. And, you know, and the friend I'm talking about is the JJ Polachek that I mentioned earlier. And he was like, yeah, dude, that's doom metal. And I was like, that's a whole fucking genre of music? So that definitely made me want to check out and just dive into that that whole, you know, realm of things. But, um, yeah, I think, I think this might be a little more challenging to get into uh, from a, a new person's you know, entry point, because there are, from then Opeth, because there's a lot less clean vocals, almost no clean vocals on this, and, and I know that the slower, the thing that initially actually drew me in of the slower pacing is a turnoff for some people, but I really don't think from Swallow the Sun, and especially on this album, uh, or particularly on this album, that it's that extreme. It's Slowness, not not at all like what Funeral Doom is or even some other Death Doom bands are. I think this is a really good one to check out. But um, but yeah, it might be a little more difficult to get into than than Opeth, which this is you know kind of Death Doom and that's more progressive death. But whatever. Um, yeah, but do not don't do not let that dissuade you from from checking these guys out. Um, there, th this and um, New Moon are my two favorite albums by them. After that. They kind of fell off for me, but I, I do think I really enjoyed that uh, from their latest album, the the third disc, the Funeral Doom disc. I really, really enjoyed that one from what I've listened to, but the other two and the albums between um, New Moon and that, not not really for me. But yeah, absolutely amazing. I paid more money for this album than. I paid more for this album than I have for any other album in my collection. I paid about $160 to get my hands on this with shipping and everything included. And absolutely worth it. I love love that album art. Just incredible. Incredible. I saw these guys live. Great. And on this album is a uh, Candlemas cover of the song Solitude, which is actually the reason I got into Candlemas was because of this band. Uh, and it helped me get over my initial aversion to listening to Candlemas and, and uh, bands of that time period that kind of had that cheesy 80s vocals that just kind of turned it off for me. But yeah, incredibly important album for me. Yeah. Okay, so there we are. We got through all of the albums i can't believe it but uh if you listen to any of these and want suggestions on something else to listen to as a follow-up or a continuation in the style afterward leave a comment i'll be more than happy to respond those were the albums that got me into metal music and it wasn't until years later that i kind of started listening to and getting into the the classics so i'm just saying don't necessarily feel like you have to start with the classics start with what works for you, there's plenty of time to go back and listen to the other stuff. Talk to you guys later.